Kenya, like other countries in the region, is bearing the brunt of climate change impacts and the associated socio-economic losses. The situation is exacerbated by high dependence on climate-sensitive natural resources. We used to have rains during the long rains and also we used to have the short rains. They were predictable. We could even tell the exact date that we were going to start. Today, we're experiencing erratic rainfalls. And therefore, our food security is actually seriously threatened. For example, tea is our uh, main export crop. It is one of those which are very vulnerable to climate change. For example, in tea, there's a lot of effect of hailstones destroying the tea. There's effects of uh, frost. There are effects of new pests and diseases. There's a lot of erosion because the land is open where the tea is grown. Pastoralists in the north parts of this nation are experiencing very, very, very severe droughts continuously. And indeed, we think that uh, pastoralism as an industry, as an economy, probably uh, will, if there will be no interventions, will become extinct. We are also affected by uh, climate change on our, on, on our wildlife. Tourism is the backbone of this country's economy. And wildlife is also affected by this. Because of continuous drought, they don't get enough forage, they don't get enough space, and therefore it's also you know, a serious phenomenon that is facing us. Resources that are geared towards development, you know, are now into emergency, are uh, rooted to emergency. So, uh, meaning that, you know, the development processes are slowed down. Uh, but also in terms of the damage uh, that uh, uh, it has on the economic growth, it's estimated that, you know, if nothing is done, uh, Kenya, for example, would be losing 1.2 billion Kenyan shillings every year to flooding. You know, so this is a tremendous, tremendous uh, drawback for the country. In response to the challenges posed by climate change, Kenya has developed a national climate change response strategy a national climate change action plan and a national adaptation plan with the aim of providing a vision for low carbon and climate resilient development pathway. The Low Emission and Climate Resilient Development Project is one of the initiatives that are key to Kenya's strategy in curbing global warming. With the Low Emissions uh, Project, we're looking at how can we reduce emissions in, indust in, in industries how can we reduce emissions in manufacturing? How can we reduce emissions in transport? That is basically the purpose of that project. And also just to raise awareness so that we as consumers can also buy, use and utilize uh, technologies that are not huge carbon emitters. We want to sensitize Kenyans to the fact that there are many things that we do that are polluting and not conducive to the environment. So if an ordinary Kenyan, for example, is using kerosene, we would advise that Kenyan, for health purposes, to use solar technologies, even for cooking. And these are available, solar stoves and so on. Or stoves that use less charcoal, avoid using firewood and so on. So it affects all of us, it affects all ordinary Kenyans, and most importantly, it affects their health. When at least 150 world leaders gathered in Paris on November the 30th, during the first day of the 2015 Climate Change Conference, President Uhuru Kenyatta took the opportunity to highlight Kenya's progress towards the fight against global warming. Climate change continues to adversely impact Kenya's social economic development, and my government has therefore joined the international community to pledge voluntary national measures and actions for emission reduction and enhancing adaptation to climate change. In this respect, Kenya was among the first developing countries to submit an ambitious intended nationally determined contribution to the UNFCC Secretariat, despite the fact that we contribute a mere 0.1% of the total global emissions. Prior to the Paris Conference, countries that are party to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, had been asked to submit their national action plans for mitigation and adaptation to climate change. Some of the sector-wide voluntary domestic measures and actions to address 
climate change include expansion in geothermal, solar and wind, and other renewables and clean energy. Close to two-thirds of our power generation is at present green. Progress towards achieving and maintaining a tree cover of at least 10% of our country's land area, where we currently stand at 7.2%, and low carbon and efficient transportation system. To build resilience and enhance adaptation to climate change, our national adaptation plan identifies at least one strategic adaptation priority action for each sector in recognition that all sectors are vulnerable to climate change. More than 80% of the country's landmass is arid and semi-arid, making the country highly vulnerable to climate change impacts. We want to ensure that our environment is secured in terms of rehabilitation. Land degradation, you know, is going on in Africa. Deforestation is going on in Africa. The role of development partners is paramount. The United States and Kenya are working very closely, both a policy and a technical level, to address the threat from climate change. One area that we are also partnering in through our, our work with the government is to help uh, create innovations in green energy and green technologies. So Net Fund, which is a parastatal under the Ministry of Environment, is doing all kinds of great work to help foster innovative ideas in the private sector to develop new energy technologies that are based on renewable systems. Well, climate change was or environmental degradation and its impact was supposed to be a government's you know, um, affair and development partners affair. But today, you know, even communities where we are working with are aware of the fact that it is their duty. And it is for this um, uh, reason uh, that uh, if you see uh, the preparedness of Kenya today is better than the last time in 2007. We are having, uh, they have put in the county, uh, different counties have put, you know, disaster risk management, uh, you know, uh, uh, plans. Uh, they have their contingency plans. To our surprise, we went to Turkana and there was a contingency plan. Governors are committed to ensure that now they are going to change their CIDPs, the county development plans, so they integrate the issues of climate change climate resilience so that resources are put in the hands of the poor within the counties then they begin to change their uh, it, it actually begins to affect their lives and bring changes so that resources that are uh, uh, going to accrue from the monies that are putting in in climate change bring uh, economic development within the counties. Ekipia County is one of the counties that is well, well known in terms of the sunshine intensity. And therefore, if we can make Ekipia County to be a model county that is using green economy. Green economy is making our cities like uh, Nanyuki, Nyahururu, Lumuruti to use the solar energy. Solar energy purely, we can be able to do our industries, we can be able to, to tap that energy and make sure that we reduce even the use of the, 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 the other energies in terms of the cooking because we are going to use the renewable energy. Homa Bay is affected seriously by energy and we are looking for alternative sources of energy other than through uh, the, the plant lighting. We're looking at areas like uh, uh, solar energy, which is green as itself. We're looking at uh, other uh, geothermal energy, energy that we can be able to go augment the investment in Omobe County. Threats are varied and very much dependent on the kinds of landscapes and physical built infrastructure that we see in different parts of Kenya, which is why it's incredibly important that county level planning take place. One of the um, goals of our program with the Ministry of Environment is actually to support better modeling at the county level for climate forecasts and to integrate climate change planning into the county integrated development plans. So that information, for example, would help inform what kinds of agriculture would be developed in certain counties, what kinds of infrastructure are going to be required under certain types of future climate scenarios. Is hydropower viable in certain counties? These are the kinds of things that the decision makers at the county level really need to consider, particularly for long-term investments in infrastructure. But I would say agriculture is the most important thing in Kenya because the economy is so dependent on it, both at a macro level and at a community and household. If you compare to many nations, we have a climate change response strategy. We have a climate change bill that has just gone through the third reading. 
in the Senate. You know, Kenya has been a leader in Africa on this issue. Kenya was among the very first countries in the world to submit its post-2020 uh, goals on climate change. In, in Kenya, the government, uh, the people of Kenya deserve commendation, deserve to be commended for having done this. Kenya has done a number of things to help address this problem. Addressing the threat that climate change poses is uh, one of President Obama's and one of Secretary Kerry's top foreign policy objectives. It really is critical that we begin to address this problem, which really threatens all of us, men, women, and children all across the globe. Oh